If you want to build reports in Excel or Power BI that are flexible, scalable, and dynamic, then you need to know about DAX and data models. This is my introduction explanation. Let's go. I'll start off by just showing a pivot table report that uses a data model. Then we'll talk about the concepts and we'll introduce this idea of DAX, what that is, and bring it together with Power BI as well. So I've got a data model built in Excel, which I'll explain shortly, but let's just see it in action. I'll insert a pivot table. I've got this data model. I click OK, and it now creates a pivot table. So this pivot table is coming from this little fact table. A little table of facts and figures showing a number of people and when they were hired and what cost center they were hired in. Now, historically in Excel, you could just click on this, insert a pivot table and build a nice little report. So let's just do that. I'll go to my staff data table here and I'll bring in the count just by dragging name into the values box. There's 20 people, and we'll do it by cost center code in the rows. Okay, great. But if I want to slice and dice this by cost center name, historically, you'd have to go in here, do a lookup formula of some sort that looks up the cost center code in a little cost center table to give you the name or the reporting group. And you could then build it and it get more columns and expand this out. However, with a data model, by simply loading this table into the data model and joining this column with this column, I can now, in my report, say, actually, I don't want the cost center code, I want the cost center name. And then by also bringing in a calendar table, I can say, I want that by year in my columns, or I want it by cost center name and year in the rows, and then month in the columns. So you can slice and dice this in a whole bunch of different ways. So how do we set up this data model? Because the same approach works in Excel as it does in Power BI, so let's take a look. Okay, first of all, we use Power Query to load the data to the data model. The data model sits inside an Excel file or the data model sits inside Power BI desktop file, okay? So one nice way of doing it these days, just recently, is to right click and say, get data from table. Or if you haven't got that feature yet, you go to the data tab and you can say from table slash range. Either way, brings the data into Power Query let me just show you what that looks like. So here is, say, the staff table, and I've just renamed it. You'd have a nice couple of columns of the data just showing here in the Power Query table. And I went close, close and load two, and a little checkbox comes up where you say data model. Okay, nice and straightforward. I repeated that for the cost center table and the date table, loaded all these three things in. So where is this data model? Well, if you have a tab called Power Pivot, then it's sitting here. If you don't have that tab, then simply go to the data tab, click the Manage Data Model button, and that will prompt you to install the Power Pivot add-in. But the second time you click it, it'll actually just open up the data model. So this is part of the Excel file, but hidden in the background. And the magical view is the diagram view. Now this is where you end up joining together your items. Let me just show you how you do this. So this replaces the need for X lookups and V lookups in this sort of scenario. So let me just delete the line that I'd previously created. All you have to do is say, I want to join the cost center code column to the cost center code column, and it's done. That could be millions of VLOOKUP formulas replaced. 
OK. I did the same thing for calendar. I can now slice and dice my report. The column names, by the way, aren't relevant. It's actually the data inside those columns that's the key. OK, so with the model set up, we can now produce our report and slice and dice by names, etc. Let me just show you that in Power BI. So I've got the same process. I went get data from an Excel workbook, or you can click this button, pull the data in, close and load, or close and apply in Power BI's case. And I've got a data model built here. And I'll just hook up my higher date to my date. And I'll hook up my uh, cost center code to my cost center code. I can now produce a Power BI report showing me maybe my, let's say, a matrix visual, showing me a count of names, and I'll show it. Let me just change that to a count. There we go, there's the 20 people, and we want it with cost center name in the rows, and let's put our months in the columns. So there's the Power BI copy version of what I've just done in Excel. So that's data models. Okay, a very brief introduction. Tables, like lookup tables, these tables at the top that I've put here, they're the things you slice and dice your report by, by month, by year, by cost center name. They're referred to as dimension, dim tables, or or lookup tables or mapping tables. Whereas your table with the facts and figures, the things you're counting or averaging or summing, you know, multiple transactions, multiple rows, thousands of and millions of rows of data in these tables potentially, they're your fact tables, facts and figures. Okay, so that's a brief introduction. And I say brief, there's lots more to it, but that's a brief introduction to the concept of the data model. So what about DAX? Well, let's go back here. This approach of simply dragging in, like name into the values box, and then Excel or the data model, um, assuming it's the count, this is called an implicit measure. Sometimes it does a sum, sometimes it does a count. It's much better and, and it's more flexible if you actually explicitly state what your calculation is. Like I want it to be the count of rows in that table, or I want it to be the sum of a particular column. Also, you can build much more complex things. And we'll build a couple now. We'll do a count. We'll then do a count year to date. We'll then do a count comparing this year versus the same period last year, or with DAX formulas. Okay. So what are DAX formulas? Well, DAX stands for Data Analysis Expressions. It's a formula language that works with filters and columns of data, essentially. And it's built into Power BI. It's built into Excel. It's all related to the data model. Okay. So with Excel, let's build a simple DAX measure. You can do this in one of two ways. You could either right click on one of your tables and add a measure into that table, or you can go to Power Pivot in Excel and say measures, new measure. So that's the Excel approach. In Power BI, you can come across to here. You could right click on one of these tables and say new measure. Let me show you it in Power BI. So new measure, you get a formula bar that pops up. You can control mouse wheel in to make that bigger. And let's just say, I want number of staff equals. It's simply the count rows. This is DAX that we're writing now. This is a DAX function called count rows. And it asks you for what table do you want to count the rows of? Well, it's my staff data table. That's it. Nice and simple. And I can simply give that measure. So here we are, number of staff. Give that a little tick and turn it into a card. So there's 20 staff. But I could turn that into a matrix visual and do exactly the same things we've done here. So you know, you're asking why bother if it's 
just repeating what we've already got. Well, you can then build on this. You can make it more complex functions that refer to this one. And by building up these little helper measures or base measures, you really future-proof your model and you make it much more robust. And if things change in the future, it's a simple one minute fix rather than maybe an entire rebuild. So please don't use implicit measures. Don't use the drag and drop type stuff that just automatically happens. Be specific, write an explicit measure like this. So how do I do that in Excel? Well, let's jump across and we simply do the similar thing. Right click, add measure. Then a different type of box pops up, but it's the same concept as, as in Power BI. Let's say number of people. And we'll say it's count rows. And we simply can go and find or search for staff. There it is. Close the brackets. It's a number, a thousand separator by default. Perfect, okay. And I can get rid of this count of name and actually now we see number of people. It's the same result. So at this stage, it doesn't look like we've done anything that's worthwhile, but you've built a solid foundation for future formulas that you're about to write. Okay, so let's write a total year to date function. Okay, how do I do that? Right click on staff data, add measure, total staff YTD equals. Now I can carry on here, but let me just show you another way of writing the same formula in Excel, cancel. Okay, up here in the measures box under power pivot. Now this shows up, remember, after you click the green manage data model button on your data tab. I'll go new measure. This box is actually a little bit more user friendly. It looks the same as the box I just used, but it's subtly different. You actually get a bit of color coding and zoom doesn't escape every time you press tab. It's actually a nicer experience doing it this way. So, um, staff YTD. Okay. There's a lovely function called total YTD. Perfect. This is a DAX function, it's not an Excel function, it's a DAX function. It only works with the data model. Same function works in Power BI. So we say total year to date for, and I type the square bracket and I can see the number of people measure. So I can reuse other calculations, which is a beautiful thing. It builds a nice organized, structured sort of pathway of formulas. So number of people, comma, using my calendar date column, Whenever you see the word dates in a function, always put in your calendar date table. You must have a calendar table for this to work. I'll put a little link in the notes and up above to um, a folder where I've got a pre-built calendar for you. Okay, calendar date. And that is it, I can close the bracket. If you happened to be running on a financial year, you can actually put an optional year end in the brackets as well. That's a topic for another time. Okay, so number, thousand separator, no decimals, thank you. And we click okay. It's actually dropped in automatically, which is a bit annoying, but it's easy to fix. We can just get rid of number of people. And now we've got the cumulative number of people, okay, running up through January through to December. Okay, so for 2020, the grand total for the year, we hired up to this many. And for 2021, we hired up to this many. Let's actually display that in a better way. Really, we should put year and month. And this is the beauty of DAX. You can just swap out and slice and dice in any way you want. It's really quite powerful. So we had 13 people year to date at the end of December 2020. And then for 2021, we recruited a grand total of seven. So we built up like that. So that's how you do a total year to date function. In Power BI, I won't rewrite it, but the same thing, but this time you just right click on staff data, new measure, total year to date, and away you go. Okay, so let me go back into Excel. And I can, you know, take out cost center name, 
and I could put this year and month into my rows. And now I can go to my design or pivot table analyze, sorry, pivot chart. And now I've got a nice cumulative total chart, which I could add a slicer for, for maybe a cost center name, add a slicer, and then we can just slice and dice and interact with this seeing total year to date. One last DAX measure. So measures is the word used to refer to DAX formulas. They're called measures. Okay, so I'll click in here. Let's do actuals this year versus actuals last year. So I'll go to my power pivot, measure, new measure. We'll call it staff hires last year equals. And we can change how our filters interact with our data. Again, this is a topic for another time, but we can say calculate, which is the word for change filter in DAX language, our number of people. And we want to jump back a year. So you actually use the date add function and you put in there the calendar. And again, this isn't an in-depth discussion about how DAX works. There's plenty of articles about that. This is just showing you what's possible. So calendar date minus one year. Okay, close the bracket on the date add, close the bracket on the calculate, check your formula, number, thousand, zero decimals. So if I change this out and just make it a bit easier to see, here we have two people hired or let's take out staff year to date and just put number of people. That would be easier. Okay, so in January 2021, there were two people hired. Last year, two people hired. That's that two. Here's one, here's one, that's that one. Here's the three, here's the three. Here's the one, here's the one. So now you can do sort of side-by-side -side analysis. So if I put a filter on here, add a slicer, and say I just want to see 2021, and insert a pivot chart, click OK. I can show how my hires are going versus last year. You can build all sorts of solutions this way. So data models allow you to slice and dice your data based on relationships between tables. From an Excel user's point of view, they replace VLOOKUPs and XLOOKUPs. They can replace a lot. You get the data in using Power Query and you load to the data model. In, for DAX, you add functions, formulas that can sum, count, max, min, all those sorts of calculations that you want to do. But then you build upon them using more complex DAX, such as total year to date, this year versus last year. You can do actuals versus budget, variances, lifetime to date. There's just an endless number of calculations you can do to enrich your report. So I hope that helps. I hope it gives you a sense, just to start off with, what people are talking about when they mention data models and when they mention DAX. Let me know what you think. Subscribe to the channel. Please share this with others. Let them know that you found this useful if you did. And let me know. I really enjoy getting your feedback. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And I will catch you later.